Well, I, I think the, the challenge of cyber risk modeling really comes uh, from three things, right? One is the fact that, uh, and I'm sure we'll talk a lot about this, is the concept of the fact that there is no data to model this. But if you think about what the data is, there's three issues that are fundamentally going on. The first one is that the past doesn't really predict the future. So uh, with traditional you know, insurance modeling, what you do is you look at claims data over a large period of time, uh, and you use that to actually decide how the future is going to look. Now, in cyber, that doesn't work as much because the risk, in some sense, is constantly changing. The second issue to deal with with cyber risk is, is really the fact that you're playing against an active adversary. Right? So if you think about a hurricane or something like that that's coming towards uh, one of your, uh, to an insured, uh, let's say the insured decides to board their windows. The hurricane is not saying, ah, you know, the insured has boarded their windows, so let me increase my wind speed by another 20 knots. Right? What is in cyber, that actually happens, right? So what happens is one of your customers or one of your insureds puts up a firewall and, and somebody on the other side of the planet says, ah, I, I see your firewall and I'm going to raise you something. So now you're actually having to model a little bit like a chess match between your insured and the bad guys. And, and so that's a different type of modeling than the traditional static modeling where you know, people are not trying to get into a lot of these kinds of issues, whereas here you have that active adversary. And the third is just purely accumulation, because uh, the accumulation risk with cyber is, is not static or restricted to just, say, a particular location or a particular industry. Frankly, you could have uh, a company in Singapore uh, having accumulation with a company in Florida because they both have servers in the same data center in California. And so now you actually have accumulation that is no longer geographically uh, different, uh, geographically located. And I think these are sort of the three big challenges when you actually start to think about cyber risk. Well, I think it's really when you go to those three facts that I just talked about, you have to think about, well, how are you now going to build a risk model that, uh, that overcomes those three factors? And I think there's, there's, uh, there's a subtle difference between how historical uh, insurance models have been built. And, and those models were always built uh, by what I call as data from an authoritative source. Now, in cyber, there is no such authoritative source of data. So what you have to really think about is you have to now go collect that data yourself. And that is really what science is doing. So what we're trying to do is collect data across a universe of companies, across hundreds and hundreds of sources, and to do that at scale so we can actually start to pull all the information we need and the data we need to build these risk models without relying upon the insured, without relying on the broker, without relying on the insurer, uh, and, and frankly, being able to pull all this data without relying on any kind of authoritative source. And that's the fundamental difference where now it's more about data collection as opposed to risk modeling. And the data collection has to feed the risk models and the risk models now have to feed the data. Because unlike other types of data, uh, other types of risk, the cyber risk is changing. So you might have data today and six months from now the risk has changed. So you now have to collect the data almost on a continuous basis. And so you have sort of have this cycle between data collection and risk modeling where each one of them is as the risk changes, you collect more data. As you collect more data over time, it changes the risk model. And I think it's that sort of effect that you're really trying to engender uh, in order to have a workable cyber risk model.